Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on intussusception. Intussusception is the invagination of one portion of the intestine into another portion, where 80% of the cases commonly involve the ileocecal junction. So this picture here shows the ileocecal junction. You can see the distal colon invaginates into the proximal colon. So this is a condition called intussusception. And it is the most common form and cause of intestinal obstruction in infancy and early childhood. The peak age group will be 2 months to 4 years old. So the common causes of intussusception, these are the common lead points. It could be due to structural causes such as Merkel's diverticulum or duplication cyst, neoplastic cause if there is lymphoma, polyps or any vascular malformations, vascular cause such as Henochelin purpura and leukemia, and it can also be due to a foreign body in the area. So the child is usually previously healthy, or they might have a preceding viral illness a few days ago. And they often have abdominal pain, which is sudden in onset, very severe pain, and intermittent cramping pain. So every time they have the pain, it lasts for around a few seconds to a few minutes. And it is intermittent, which means it comes, goes, and then comes again, the pain. So during the time in between those attacks, so the duration of interval could be ranging from 5 to 30 minutes. And during that time when they don't have the pain, the child may appear well or quiet. So when they have pain, they might be screaming in pain. And besides this abdominal pain, they may also have vomiting. So the early vomiting usually consists of undigested food particles, but if the child presents as late presentation, then the vomiting might be bilious due to intestinal obstruction, where there is greenish content. And for the stools, they are initially normal, and then in late stages, they might become dark red and mixed with mucus. So this is a pathognomonic sign of intussusception, which is called the red currant jelly stool. However, this is only seen in late cases. So on physical examination, the child's appearance depends on their stage of presentation. So they might be well looking, drowsy, or if late stages, they might be dehydrated, or even fitting due to electrolyte imbalance after vomiting, such as due to hyponatremia, which is low sodium levels. Look for the signs of shock, and also on inspection, we expect to see a sausage-shaped abdominal mass can be at the right upper quadrant or the epigastrium area. So this sausage-shaped abdominal mass is also a typical finding in intussusception. They might have abdominal distension if it is late sign of intestinal obstruction. And on digital rectal examination, we might be able to see blood or mucus. So for investigations, we can do plain abdominal x-ray. In this picture here, it shows the absence of cecal gas paucity of the bowel gas on the right side with loss of visualization of the lower border of the liver and also you can see that there are dilated small bowel loops so <coughs> it suggests a small bowel intestinal obstruction other investigations ultrasound of the abdomen is also a useful diagnostic tool and this picture shows the target sign on transverse section so you can see the target sign, which is a sign for intussusception, because the distal bowel is invaginating into the proximal bowel, causing this sign. Barium anima can also be done for diagnosis and reduction. So for management of intussusception, first we resuscitate the patient, give aggressive rehydration with boluses of normal saline or Hartman solution, and wait until they are stable to proceed to other management such as reduction or surgery. Closely monitor their vital signs and their urine output and if they are showing septic signs, we can consider giving antibiotics. So take note that the successful management depends on high index of suspicion, early diagnosis, adequate resuscitation and prompt reduction. <coughs> so next we'll talk about the reduction. Non-operative reduction there are three types, which are the hydrostatic reduction with saline under ultrasound guidance, and this is the preferred option. Other types are air or oxygen reduction, 
or barium enema reduction. So this reduction, which is non-operative reduction, should be attempted in most patients. However, there are some contraindications to enema reduction. If the patient has peritonitis, bowel is perforated already in late stages, they're having severe shock, or neonates or children more than 4 years old, or the history is already more than 48 hours, there could be a higher risk of bowel perforation. And if reduction, if this non-operative reduction is contraindicated, then we should proceed for surgery. So these are some of the indications for surgery. If the non-operative reduction failed, if there is bowel perforation, or there is a suspected lead point, or small bowel intersection, then we will need to do surgery. So this is the recurrence rate of intersection in children. The rate of recurrence is 5 to 10 percent with lower rates after operative reduction. So if do surgery, there will be lower rate of recurrence. For non-operative reduction, the success rate in recurrent intersection, the success rate for non-operative reduction in recurrent cases is about 30 to 60%. So that's all for this video. Thank you.